Hello everyone, welcome to the next session of From Nothing, Kaylin's Story. We are beginning today's session on Sunday morning. Now, you're, you've are you been looking forward to the Fall Festival for weeks. How do you think Kaylin would sleep before the Fall Festival? Um, he has participated in sporting events but this one's a little bit different um this one has a little bit more meaning to it sure so i think he would be a little bit more a little bit anxious maybe it would take him an hour to get to sleep but he eventually would fall asleep and okay. he might take something to help him calm him calm his <laughs> nerves okay um <clears throat> so uh like perhaps mellow thistle or a sleeping tea from buds or something like that a sleeping tea he wouldn't he wouldn't do drugs like never mind uh, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah he would he would uh definitely do the sleeping tea uh before bed um and even then it would still take him a little bit to get to sleep but he would rest uh oh. okay then let's say you wake up at about seven thirty. unless you would sleep in later than that do you think no, no. Um, he, when is uh, he would have been told when the fall festival starts? Uh, it's beginning yes. at noon. Noon. Okay. Um, then he would definitely go get a a, a hearty breakfast. Okay. Probably not from the um, probably not from the mess hall. He would take his team out to get a a good one at probably so, the Mary Guard. It's funny you say that because oh. as you're heading off? down the halls no it's not blocked off but as you're uh -huh. heading down the halls of the merry guard it is crammed oh there are more people here than you've ever seen there are so many people and in fact it's so busy with different contractors and students milling about everyone is called in today for the fall festival and they're all filing in and out of the mess hall which you know, that's surprising. The mess hall smells very strongly of food. And the other thing you notice is that Persh is not at his desk. All right. Well, this is a bit of an event, isn't it? You also uh, do not see your team out in the hall. I think curiously he'll step inside the mess hall and see if there any of them are there. Uh, the mess hall is packed. And you see that the wall that normally has the counter where a couple things are placed out, you see that breakfast today for the fall festival is elaborate. And anything you can think of to eat is out on the counter, uh, piled up in high platters and deep bowls. And as you're looking around, you do see your team. Uh, some of them are in line getting food and some of them are at a table near the side of the room. Uh, and Lilith sees you. And she waves at you from the table. All right. He'll nod with a little bit of smile, uh, of a smile on his face, and he'll go join them. Okay. Do you get breakfast or do you pitch them? Oh, uh, yeah, he'll go get breakfast. Um, okay. But it's not like uh, heavily, it's not packed with heavy, heavy carbs. It's more protein than anything else. Sure. Uh, you can collect sausage and ham steaks and what look like these thickly crumbed patties of pork that have been just soaked in gravy. It's Everything smells amazing. Um, when you eat breakfast, you will gain 10 temporary hit points. Okay. That's great. And then he'll go join everybody. Okay. As you make your way over to the table, uh, by this point, everyone has gotten to the table that you're at, um, and you can't help but feel like there's lots of people in the mess hall that are not normally here. There's lots of yeah. adventurers and contractors that are wearing gear that they shine with mithril, or you can smell the energy of magic coming from them from all over the room. And as you sit down... Uh, your team's kind of looking around a little anxiously. Matthew says, 
This is quite the turnout, isn't it? Aye, it's... It's something else. Um, reminds me of uh, the summer games back home. And... Lots. Sean Lots of... is, like, pointing, and you see he's pointing at Persh, who's approaching the stage. All right. I guess listen up. As Persh climbs up onto the stage, the room suddenly falls silent. Thank you all for coming today. We're all very happy to have you here for the Fall Festival. This is our 71st. I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out. However, there are some ground rules that I must set. The Fall Festival, as you all know, begins at noon. As you may have heard, the Physicary, the Griffin's Bag, and the Benevolent Temple of Drunnir have all offered their services as safe haven. Each of you may take rest in one of those locations once during the Fall Festival, which ends at midnight. As you're making your way through Ferrum, you will notice that there are walls, boundaries, set up around the main streets where spectators can watch from. If any one of your team steps out of the boundaries of the Fall Festival, your team is forfeit. You are disqualified, and that is the end of the festival for you. Each team will receive totems. Only one totem is the real one. It is perfectly mundane. All your totems must be worn in a visible place that can be reached. At midnight strikes, the totems will be tallied up, and the team with the most real totems will win. You'll know if a totem you take is real when the team you've taken it from is suddenly teleported out of the Fall Festival, which goes for you as well. So be careful how you advertise your totems. As always with Merigard business, there are no executions, no intentional slaying of people, no maiming, no disfiguring. Should an ally fall, they will be teleported out of the arena, where they will be healed to and tended to by our kind cleric, Mr. Treat. Before anything else, do I have any questions to answer? And he's looking out over the mess hall. Everyone seems to be quiet. Do you have a question? Yeah. Uh, no, I think he understands all of it. He'll just stay silent. Persh nods. Then I wish you all a very successful fall festival. If you have a couple hours, maybe some last minute preparations might be in order. Good luck to you all. And Persh then steps down from the stage. And conversations right. strike back up as if they never stopped. All right. Is everybody here? Uh, I look around. Is you everybody have, from my team here? team is here, yeah. All right. Uh, so, have a good breakfast. Let's have, or let's have a good breakfast. And, um... Let's meet up at the ranger classroom after. Um, it's elsewhere, so we can talk a little bit about a little bit about strategy. Is that okay with everybody? That's fine with me. And the party just nods. Um, Duracon says, "Well, I am happy to provide the healing for our team. We might want to stop." and pick up some potions. That's a good idea. Um, do they have everything closed off already? Or does anybody know? Has anybody been outside yet? Matthew says, I took a look out. People, you can still go places. Um, and I know the Griffin's Bags, he did just say it's part of the festival, so they're probably open. All right. 
wonder if we can get them for free. I mm. doubt it. I'm not up for stealing from glass. Oh, well, I'm not up for stealing as well. I'm just wondering if he's offering them for free for the fall festival. Maybe it's a good thing to ask yeah, when it's we get worth there. Asking. All right, sir, so meeting at the ranger classroom. Uh, hi. We'll we'll meet at the ranger classroom, talk a little bit, and then we'll head over to glasses. Sounds like a plan. I have a question. What's that? Where is the ranger classroom? <laughs> Maybe we eat breakfast here and we'll all go together. All right. And he just takes a long drink of clava. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. There is... So... Uh -huh. You can't help but get the feeling like Sean wants to say something, but he's keeping it back. He's not the sort of person who can keep a secret. Oh, and it looks like you have something on your mind? I I do, but I don't want to say it here. I will... Uh, there might be people listening, and I think it's useful to know. All right, let's wait until we're in the ranger classroom. Aye, aye. That's, that's what I was thinking. Uh, Fair enough. And as you eat your breakfast, finally... You make your way out of the mess hall, and everyone is a hum with the excitement of the fall festival and talking. Some people are not so careful about discussing their plans. Um, but as you get away from the mess hall in the main common area, down into the actual wings of the Merry Guard, it gets less dense with people. It's less packed and easier to get, you know, some elbow room. And then finally, you press into the ranger's classroom. Uh, Triss is not here, so let me remove her. Your team files in after you. Uh, Matthew, there he is. All right. And as the, as you step in, like Terracon is looking around, and he says, "It is beautiful here." Hi, welcome to the Skywood. Reminds me of home. I think it's fairly close to your home. Yeah, you said the Skywood, so above it. Hmm. Hmm. He just kind of chuckles to himself. Um, Sean, as soon as the ranger's door closed, Sean whips around and says, Maxwell's going to be in the fucking fall festival. Okay. You know, you Maxwell, the rogue instructor? He's gonna be there, fucking with people. Alright. What if we run into him? I think... Well, we have a student of his. Yeah, you see inside. Matthew is uh, scratching his face and looks nervous. You know him well? Uh, I... Okay. Have you picked, have you picked up any insight? Onto he's, what he usually does. He's real slick. Um, short answer is no. He has a <laughs> lot of tricks. Um, he's real right. good at distractions. He's really good at slipping away when you you swear you're looking at him. And if your eyes flit away for just a second, he's gone. I. It's kind of unnerving. Um, if we run into him... Why is he in the festival? And Sean says, Widget told us that if anyone who gets the totem off of Maxwell, it's worth like five totems. But he's Maxwell. He's the rogue instructor. He's just there to make things difficult for people. They said that he's there. He's going to try and take the fake totems off of people so that it's easier for other teams to grab the real one. And, um, I don't know what do that we means. know? But all the totems look alike, yes? Well, I know there's a real we, one. We have to be able to tell somehow. Right. Hurst did so, say they're mundane. 
They're mundane, but one token is the real one, and we all have... Well, that... The token has to be visible. Right? It must be subtle. You have to look real close, I'm sure. But... And Matthew says, Maxwell would be able to see real quick, wouldn't he? Because he can fucking... He can tell where your coin purse is, even when it's inside your coat. Hmm. Well, well, it's like tapping on her elbows, and she says, I'm not afraid of Maxwell, okay? He's a person just like you and me. If he tries to get us, he gets up close. We can still take him out. I can get him on the ground, at least. Well, who has the best eyes here? Is it me? You or me, I imagine. All right. Vion and has the granted room. me blessings in the perception. It's good to know. Um, do I have any, any idea of what his modifier is? Uh, roll me an insight. Uh, oh, that disappeared. Where'd it go? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, why did I roll an advantage? Okay. Sorry. Uh, the first one is a 13, so it is 16. 13. Uh, 16. He's... I mean, you've noticed Duracon doesn't miss much. Um, you imagine he probably has maybe a plus 4 to a plus 6 somewhere around there? Plus 4, plus 6. Okay. Um, so is is around mine um all right so i guess the only thing we can do to prevent him from stealing it from us is um having it either around duracon's neck or my neck how uh effective are you at getting out of grapples and manipulating people's hands when they're on you uh I can get out of tight spaces. I do have proficiency in acrobatics. Okay. Then uh, everyone seems to kind of like shrug and agree that you should wear it. All right. Well, you can probably shove your way out of tight spots. I am good at dealing with people physically. Yeah. He is proficient in athletics. <laughs> All right. Here's an idea to make sure that uh, we make it a little bit tougher on uh, Maxwell. Every hour during the fall festival, Duracon and I will switch our totems. Well, Sean speaks up. Widget said that he's trying not to actually disqualify any teams. So he's going to go for fake totems, not a real one. I see. All right. Because he's not trying to win. He's just trying to keep things interesting. At least that's what Widget said. I don't know if she knows him very well. And suddenly, the door to the ranger's classroom opens. And the the, the medium-armored Killian looks in and says, Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Are you all using the room? I can, I can go. Uh, just give us, a uh, 15 minutes. We're discussing things. Sure, sure, sorry, sorry. And he <laughs> leaves. <laughs> All right, so definitely the totem should be on someone who's perceptive. That ain't me. And... <laughs> well, it's either me or Durkon. Um Matthew says, I can be perceptive too. All right. So... And I'd like to find uh, somebody better at getting out of a hole than me. <laughs> uh, all right, then. Um, how then about we do... Duracon says, right, but if you're trying to take them off people, we don't want you to get got. That's and true. Matthew says, okay, fine. And then he stops. 
You do have the better lifting fingers, Matthew. You're just trying to so. flatter me now. <laughs> well then, uh, I'll carry the totem. That's fine. That works I think, for uh, me. That's decided. Uh, I'd rather be up any... close in the brawl anyway. <laughs> that's fair. Um, anybody else have any insight onto Sean what is we're... scratching his chin and looking at Matthew and he says I can probably plant some pretty mean traps if we get the the upper hand on someone and Matthew says I could All right. too maybe work together on that one and Sean says just like the old days and Matthew just nods and says just like the old days <laughs> All right, so that could be a strategy then. Have, uh, instead of being mobile. They, they both look at you and say, in unison, can you lay a snare, like, at the same time? No, but, well, I've done it before, but probably not to the quality of that you're talking about. They both kind of... I could, I could probably do it. Um, so, I guess this, our strategy, if uh, everybody's amenable to it, is controlling in one section of the uh, play area, making people come to us, walk into our traps. If that's something we can really do. It might be dangerous to stay in one place. Um, but we do have the advantage that we're all pretty... Quiet. And then she looks at Duracon. <laughs> Is there anything we can do about your noisy ass? Well, it could be the bait. I accept this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you Vine really? Or... find this a truly suitable tactic for war. So long as my pincer doesn't give up on me. We won't. I trust All right. you. I think that's our, considering our strengths, I think uh, that could be our definite strategy. Keep to one section of the play area, now that, that people walk into our traps. Also, John, I picked up on uh, that spell you were doing when we were out on that free agency, the uh, alarm spell. Oh, did you now? I. And? Are you proficient with it already? Aye, it's effective. That it is. So, if anything, do we... Uh, do we know the area? Like, the map, like, uh, considering Pharaoh, do we know the, like, the boundaries? Well, oh, he just, it don't worry. That won't be a okay. problem. Okay. Uh, all right then. So let's make our way to the Griffin's bag. If we have the coin, maybe we can grab like a cloak or something to when we need Duracon to not be bait. All right. Duracon says, "I have some coin, and I could use a nice cloak." <laughs> Fair enough. All right, let's go see what uh, Glass has in his inventory. Okay, so your party leaves the ranger's classroom. Uh, and you see Killian's just kind of standing outside, twiddling his fingers and says, Sorry, uh, hope you all had a nice chat. I didn't mean to. Skywood's all yours. Uh, you, did, he, did he hear? Was he listening in? No, the door was and shut, and no sound gets through the doors, because it's another plane. Uh, it's another plane, yep. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. He just says, good luck. I uh, expect I'll be seeing you on the leaderboards. That's the plan. Uh, and as you make your way out, uh, let me pull up the map. Okay. It's tense a little bit. But as you make your way down to the Griffin's Bag, 
the streets are packed with people. Vendors are shouting their wares. People are milling about, excitedly chattering and jittering about what is going to be happening today. And you see that the main street, all the way up to the gates, is roped off. But the ropes are low, so people can freely walk over them as they wish. And you see that the street is still packed with people, as it's only like 10 in the morning now. As it's not, like, cordoned off yet. People are not prevented from being where the fall festival will happen. Um, you right. see there are lots of con contractors and other students milling about, making their way to different places. The general store seems to be a common place for people who are picking up equipment and rope and tools and such. But you make your way down to the Griffin's Bag. It is so busy in Ferrum that there is no chance of random encounter. All right, then. Uh, let me pull up. As you arrive in the magic shop of the Griffin's Bag, you see that it, it too, is crammed with contractors and students. And as you enter, you hear Glass say, Ah, I was hoping to see you all today. How can I help you? Good morning, Glass. Good morning. Um, this beautiful day where all of you will be at each other's throats. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, you will be stopping hoping... by later, yes? I have rice cakes. <laughs> if it's necessary, I you'll be our first stop. Good to hear. Good to hear. You want to get them while they're still warm or the marshmallow. It will get all set and sticky, and that's not good. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, well, uh, we we're hoping for some potions. I have many potions. I had I have ordered been ordering them for the last few weeks, intending for today, and you are not the only people coming in search of them. How many do you need? He looks to the group. Duracon shrugs and says two each. I was thinking the same thing. Two each. Um two each? Are they discounted for today? Glass looks at you with a sly smile and he says Discounted on the day of my greatest profit. He gives just a cheeky little smile. Just you can roll a persuasion, but the DC's high. <laughs> okay. Nah, uh, I'll use my token to give myself a D4. Okay. Um, That's oh, That's pretty good. Yeah. I suppose I can cut a little off the top. But only because you've done such good work for me, yes? Uh, Plus maybe some... I can take ten off each one. Forty gold each potion. Is this reasonable? Right. That's reasonable. Um. So, that's eight potions. Or, I'm sorry, that's ten potions. Uh, yeah. Four hundred gold. Go. Four hundred gold. Okay. Uh, every, each party member kind of mills about in their coin purses. Uh, I'm going to roll some D100s. Everybody got 80 gold each? Uh, Sean says, No, uh, I'm a little short. All right. Can you come? I have 50 gold. Uh, give me 40. He and gives I'll, you 40. I'll front him 40. Uh, so mine is 120. Okay. This is everyone where... else, <laughs> everyone else puts out eighty gold and buys two potions. All right, so 100, 120 from me. Sure, man, that puts me back a little bit. <laughs> well, if you do well, perhaps you'll make all that money back and more. Mm -hmm. Now, as you're standing here, um, the Rakan says, "Now, Glass, we were considering options for." helping me be a little bit more subtle. Do you have anything like a cloak or maybe a ring or something? And Glass nods and says, we have cloaks of elven kind. They are a mainstay for adventurers, of course, uh, but they go for about 200 gold apiece. Can you swing that? And Duracon kind of winces and says I can cover most of it I'm short about 60 gold 
and he looks at you. Do you have <laughs> 60 gold you can swing? I will put six platinum on the table. You're a good man. Vion bless you. And Glass says, okay. And he pulls out a cloak of elven kind, which he hands to Durakon. Uh, Durakon seems pleased with it. Um, All right. Durakon, you've never really gotten a close look before, but you see Durakon accessorizes quite a bit. Um, mm. He wears many necklaces, and his fingers are dappled with all sorts of small, simple, but nice-looking rings, and his armor has all sorts of little ornamentation all across it. Um, and while all that jangles and makes noise, as he swings the cloak around and over behind him, you imagine that will probably help uh, keep his appearance a little bit more hidden. Okay, good. We're Satisfied, he'll nod. All right. Um, Kanelin will glance at the bow. Okay. Is it still there? Uh, still there. Still uh, 1100. Yep. Its limbs made of what looks to be almost ivory with mother of pearl along them. It shines with light that doesn't seem to actually reflect from anywhere. Plus, are you firm on that price on that bow? 1100 for the sun lord. That has been on my wall for a while, but that is because it is worth what it is charged, yes. Why? I have 750. And I'm slated to get you more pyrites. Mm hmm. You wish Which... to spend all of your money right now. Seven hundred and fifty. And I'll get you more pyrates. I have done deals such as this before, Kaelin. However, that is a bit too far below my asking price. I am sorry. That's fair enough. I thought I might ask. It's always worth asking. I'm still getting you more pyrites, so... Well, that is good. I would be very sad if you were to go back on your word. I'm always mad on my word. Well, if you arrive with the gold you require to purchase the Sun Vault, you have my word I will sell it to you. Fair enough. I wish you all luck in the fall festival. Thank you, Glass. And also, I heard a thing. I'm only telling you this because I like you. <laughs> there is supposed to be a great monster that will be released at sunset. Supposed to be a valuable takedown, should you get its trinket. Hmm? Any more insight? Uh, uh, that was not enough? No. Uh, uh, I just would like to know maybe some clues if you have them. So I can. Oh, you know everything I know now. I only hear what I hear from my customers. And it's going to be released right into the center. I do not know. I just know it will be suddenly unleashed. Where? Who? What? I know not. I appreciate the information, Glass. I think that'll help a lot. I wish you luck. We'll see you later. I'm sure you will. And All right. as he turns his attention to other customers, you have purchased 10 healing potions and a cloak of elven kind for Durakon to destroy his disadvantage on stealth. Amazing. Worth it, I think. Probably. Uh, <laughs> so, what do you do next? You're running out of time. Right. 
Um, Let's quickly walk the boundaries and see uh, what is the uh, best place to set up our traps. Okay. You walk the city. Now, mechanically, the way this is going to work, when you're... So, each encounter, I have a number of maps set aside. I have a number of uh, encounters set aside. The way this is going to work is every encounter we're going to roll to see where the encounter takes place who it is that you are encountering and then we roll to see which party has the advantage which one caught the other by surprise or which one found them first etc gotcha these advantage okay. rolls are very important because if your team gets the jump on another team this is when traps and such can be put into really good use now, if your team has the disadvantage, your team might be caught in a trap or maybe get surprised by the others that have appeared. Does All that right. make sense? Makes sense. Also, mechanically, I need you to be aware that if you use things that perform thunder effects, explosive effects, fire or force effects, there's a chance other parties will hear them. And if they hear them, I will roll to see if they have the gumption to try and interrupt or follow up. We will see. It depends. The way this fall festival goes is entirely through the dice rolls. Um, and there are certain events and encounters that you can roll that once you've rolled them, you cannot roll them again. Or once you've defeated them, they will not appear again. All right. There are many that will appear again, though. So... Also, as mechanically I've said before, through Persh's mouth, when a to when the real totem is taken off of a team, the encounter ends. That team is yanked out of the festival, and that's it. Which, that includes your team, too. So if you lose your totem, you are out of the fall festival. All right. So, it is what it is. I'm, most of this is going to be through dice rolls, and we're going to see how it plays out. Okay. And these are the things that you piece together as you walk around the cordoned off section. You see that most of it is the main street of Ferrum and the alleys that are immediately connected. And you see that a big section of the East Park, the Chapel Gate, the docks, and the market are all included in the sections that are going to be basically the battleground of Ferrum during the Fall Festival. And you are okay. not the only teams doing this. You see that there are other teams that are making their way up and down the streets. You recognize a few other students. No one is really giving, you know, everyone's very much a focused on the task at hand because the fall festival is a significant deal and everyone wants to win. Definitely. All right. Um, while we're scouting out the area and I want, uh, I'll just turn to Sean and, and Matthew. You're the ones that set traps mainly, so if you could keep your eyes open for what areas would be the best to set traps, uh, I think that's best. Oh, Sean says, way ahead of you, my friend. All I've right. already seen a few good chokeholds. Good deal. Nothing a good little um, tree grease trap couldn't uh, really make things sticky for them. And Matthew says, I have four wire traps that I can place. And they'll uh, they'll shred anyone that gets too close to them. Good deal. So the way this is going to work, because you have an artificer, and because your artificer, Sean, is specialized in trap setting, you have four wire traps that you can place from Matthew, and you can use a spell slot from Sean to place a trap. Now. When you place traps, basically, when you have the advantage, I'm going to ask you what sort of advantage you want to use. And if it's a trap, we'll use one of those resources. However, okay. the Fall Festival is going to be a test of endurance, uh, resource management, spell slot management, because you're only going to get three short rests throughout this festival. And while Lilith gets all of her stuff back on a short rest, I don't think anybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Yeah. No, not at all. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, and while we're walking, I am going to uh, just go over um, all that he's learned from the ambush drakes since he w helped catch them mm -hmm. for the fall festival and just kind of give, I, I, I guess the mechanics for this, I want to try and give everybody like insight onto what they do, uh, what their weaknesses are, so we can have the advantage in if we come across any ambush strikes. Sure. Okay. You pass that information on. Um, from there, once I've done that, uh, I want to turn to Lilith and Duracon. Is there anything that you two need to give yourselves the most advantage here? Is Duracon there... says, if we find ourselves in a fight, I just need someone at my back so I can't get flanked. And once he says that, he'll turn to Lilith. I think you can do that for him. Oh, no problem. So long as I, uh, you know, am not caught unawares, I'll be there. All right. I think Duracon has pretty good eyes, so you both watch each other back, each other's backs, and well, I'll keep an eye out for any danger for the rest of us. Sounds like a plan. And it is right. at this moment, time is pushed on, and suddenly there is a rift, a purple smoky rift that appears in front of you, and the sorcerer instructor, Amila Dorn, steps out. Uh, all right. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Dorn. How are you all faring? And you see that she's, like, sorting out some necklaces. Um... Fairly well. Are you prepared for the festival? I think as prepared as we'll ever be. You see that she pulls one necklace out of her left pocket and holds it out to you. She says, this is your real totem, and these are your fake ones. And she hands you five total necklaces. Each one is a mithril chain with a red and gold symbol of the Mary Guard. They all look right. the same. All right. Um, Your totems, uh, ones that you've acquired and ones that I've given you now, must always be visible. So, be careful who you assign them to. Very well. Uh, you have ten minutes left to strategize. Good luck. And then Amila steps back through another purpley, misty door and is gone. Oh, well, we haven't been sent to any specific location so let's um backtrack to where you saw the best place for traps uh sean so also mechanically there's not really a way you can't okay so your encounters there you can say you want to be here but we're rolling to see where they happen so okay like if you stay in one place, either you're going to waste a whole lot of time waiting for somebody to fall into your trap, mm -hmm. or there's just oh. nobody's going to appear because they know you're right. there. So, oh, okay. All right. So, well, I guess what we'll do is we'll do a trap alarm combo since we can ritually cast alarm, both myself and... Um, Sean. So we get I a ping. I think these confusions will make sense to you once we get started. Okay, gotcha. Um, all right. Uh, Matthew uh, and Sean, what's different about the fake ones and the real one? Sean so takes a look at the real one, and he looks real close. I'm going to roll an investigation for him. <clears throat> Sean says, 
I see it. The real one, if you look close, it has the rose on the symbol has stamen coming out of the top. It's real subtle, but the fake ones don't have that. Uh, what is what is that exactly? The player doesn't know. It's like there are like three little lines that come out of the center of the rose. Ah, uh, okay, gotcha. All right, all right, very subtle, Matthew. That's uh, if you can spot that quickly and snatch it. I'll try. That's real right. small. Mm. Perfect. Uh, all right. Just around the next then. And so. he'll put the real one on. Okay. You have your real totem. Make a note of it. Okay. And as that happens, and you begin making your way towards another spot to try and place a trap, suddenly the ropes that are cordoned off the street suddenly pull tight, and you see almost a blue field of force mm. up over them. And the fall festival begins. Ooh, okay. As it does, I need you to roll me a d6. Four. Okay. I need you to roll me a d2. This, actually, it's just a, roll me a d4. Uh, this is the advantage roll. Three. You guys have disadvantage. The enemies get the jump on you somehow. Okay. Roll me a d20. Let's see who it is that you have found, or rather, who it is that has found you. Why did it roll two of them? Uh, seven. Seven. This is the first one. Okay. Okay. Interesting. All right, then. Let me see. I need you to roll me a d6, please. Six. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I need you, Kalen, to roll me a dexterity save at disadvantage. Oh, man. Oh, 11. Okay. Which is this one? No, that doesn't go here. <clears throat> okay, so... Here is what happens. You are in the market. You have been making your way between the stalls, trying to find good places to get the jump on someone. When suddenly, Kaelin, you feel a small little tug on, your, on the heel of your foot. A net okay. <laughs> up around you and pulls you up against the tent right next to you. And as that happens, you are restrained, and your party is surprised as Fuck. a bunch of gibbering gnolls reveal themselves in their attack. They get a surprise round on you. Okay. And so it begins. As that happens... Uh, I need you to roll me initiative, please. Sure. Aha, 20. Okay. Dirt oh, no. A one. Both roll good. Yeah, mm. see that. Matthew did not. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, God. That's quite a spread. All right. So, the surprise round begins as you are netted and pulled up against this tent, these crates that it seems like as though it's 
just yanked to it, and you see that there is a strange bony knoll holding onto the rope that restrains you. Uh, emerging from the roof, this knoll takes a longbow attack at you. Okay. Uh, even though you're restrained and it had advantage, it rolled a nine to hit. Yeah, nah. But it will try again. Okay. Oh, I didn't roll that one with an advantage. I'm sorry. One moment. Uh, that's a 20 to hit. Yeah, that is. How depressing would that have been the whole time? Okay, it deals three points of piercing damage to you, Kaelin. Wow, okay. what a knoll. All right. <clears throat> this knoll runs up to Lilith uh, and will make uh, a couple of attacks at her. A short sword and a bite attack as it gets up close. Uh, with a 23 to hit, Lilith is going to try and parry this. So that's a d6 plus 4. She reduces it by 10. <laughs> All right. Hell yeah. Okay, so she reduces the damage of this short sword. I don't think it can even get over that. I don't think it... It deals no damage with the short sword attack. Uh, but the awesome. bite is different, fortunately. She cannot parry both. Uh, please just roll the damage. Jesus. Okay. She takes four points of piercing damage from the bite. Uh, which she doesn't like, but she's fine. She used her reaction to parry, so she does not hellish rebuke. Next. This knoll is going to surge up around and up into your face, Kaelin, because you are restrained and it wants to get a piece of you. Okay. A deal is a 12 to hit. Nah. Yeah. It's... Kaelin is like wiggling and trying <laughs> yeah. to be as hard hard to hit as possible. Uh, then you get bitten with a 21. Oh, okay. It is what it is. Uh, you take four points of piercing damage from the bite. Okay. They're really hitting like, well, shitty knolls. Uh, did, did Lilith get not, not get temp HP? Oh. I forgot to mark it. I'm sorry. Thank you for reminding me. I was like, I'm not... I haven't taken, like, my damage yet. Like, my actual HP damage. I need to make a note of that for everybody. Thank you for reminding me. Perhaps the next round will be better for the Knolls. But that is the end of the surprise round. And now, it's Lilith's turn. All right. Uh, Lilith is going to look between the two Knolls in front of her. Uh, she will just draw her rapier and try and stab the first guy. That's a 19 to hit, which certainly hits. She deals... 11 points of piercing damage to this one. And then she whips to the side and will stab at the next guy with the short sword in her offhand. Awesome. That is a 10 to hit, which will not hit. Uh, she kind of looks over her shoulder and you hear her say, Duracon, a little help! And you're up, Kim. Okay, um... Strained, I still can attack things around me, yes? At disadvantage, yes, you can. At disadvantage, okay. Um, I could try to cut myself away from this. You could attack uh, the, web. the Not the web, the net, yes. Um, that would take my attack action? Like Yes. You could choose okay. to try and free yourself with an acrobatics or athletics, or you can try and attack it to cut yourself free. All right. Uh, okay. But if I try to get out of it, it's an action? It's going to be an action either way. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. I think I think he'll try to acrobatics his way out. 
Roll acrobatics. DC's 14. <coughs> oh, yeah. You hit a 14. You are out of the net. Okay. You manage to find a spot to get your arm through, and you just slip through the rest of the way. And you hear the, okay. the strange knoll undead thing. Just... <laughs> All right. Uh, since he's in melee, he's not going to... Uh, <clears throat> well... No, he'll stay. He'll stay there. It, not once he's free, he's just gonna take out snake bite and the dagger, and okay. just kind of be there in melee. It doesn't have. I'm, it's not. I'm not gonna use a bonus action, but at least I'm free. You are so free that's from the. In. That is the end of his turn. Okay, this knoll is going to, uh, sudden rush. At Lilith, it's going to make a bite attack. Uh, it misses with a 15. It will try again with another bite. It misses again with a 10. Uh, oh, yeah. That's his turn. <laughs> Very effective, Mr. Knoll. Next, Witherling. Seeing that you are free, it's going to make a multi-attack at you. It's going to try and hit you with this spiked club in its hands. Okay. That's a natural 20. Uh, okay. That. Okay. Um, don't have anything to do in it. I don't have anything to counter. Yeah, so. you take eight points of piercing damage. Okay. What a crit. Uh, but because it is the Witherling, I need you to make a con save. Fun. Eleven. Eleven. You fail. You are poisoned, and you take... Oh, this was a crit. Uh, okay. So you take an additional 14 poison damage Ooh. because of the crit, and you are poisoned until your next turn. Okay. And that's that Noel's turn. Oh, no, it gets All a right. bite. It gets a bite as well. It will try. It's going to chomp you. That is a 18 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Okay. You take four points of necrotic damage. Ugh. Big ouch. It's now yep. Matthew's turn. Matthew's going to roll athletics for me. Actually, what would you have Matthew do? <clears throat> uh, oh, man. I really need his help over here. So, um... You can climb over and around these crates and such. It's it's a very low athletics check to climb over obstacles. All right. So, okay. I'll, I need to reload. Okay. Foundry has been as delightful as always lately. Yay. I don't know why it's been doing this. It doesn't do it for me, which is great, but I am frustrated that it's doing to you guys. I'm back. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah. You have uh, I need him. I need him to help me out and take out this uh, Witherling. Um, so if he can get there, let's see. Uh, I'll just, uh, just kind of. He cannot get there from there, but he can just go around that side. So he runs this way. Yeah. Let's say a little, little help. Uh, let me roll athletics for him. Okay, he makes it soundly and gets up next to you. Uh, and as he drops down behind this witherling, he will make a sneak attack. Awesome. As it is threatened by you. Uh, that's an 18 to hit, which I believe does hit. It sure does. Yeah, it does. Okay, so damage plus sneak attack. 
Yeah, as he comes dropping down, he deals 12 damage with a sneak attack, and the Null Witherling has 11 hit points. Hell yeah. It is destroyed. <clears throat> as it clatters to the ground, uh, Matthew will pluck the totem hanging from its neck. One moment while I roll a d4. It is not the real one. You have one fake totem in Matthew's inventory as he slips it over his neck. That's Matthew's turn. All right. It is now this null, the one in front of you's turn. Uh, it sees you are looking terrible, and it you see its nostrils flare with the bloodlust, and it will uh, try to bite you and swing its short sword at you, Kalen. Okay. That's a 16 to hit. No. Okay. Short sword swing. That got much worse. <laughs> yeah, it's a 9 oh. to hit. Okay. It misses both. Uh, it seems as though it's almost driven manically. Uh, you imagine next turn it will likely begin to swing recklessly. It's now Sean's okay. turn. How would Sean respond to this? What would you have him do? All right. Um... Boy. He can deal damage, uh, he can protect, or he can try and do something else. It's up to you. <clears throat> uh, okay. Uh, oh, he has burning hands, doesn't he? Does he have burning hands? Or he has he some does sort not of... have it prepared. He oh. has a flamethrower turret, because he is an artillerist. <laughs> okay. Uh, does that look like do AoE? It does, yes. Okay, if he can maybe filter in right here and try it. I mean, these these seem pretty, like, low health. Let me roll athletics for him, see if he can and get up. Do you see his I turn? don't know. He rolls a 19. He climbs awesome. up here. Uh, and what does the flamethrower turret, like, what's its range? Is it a cone, or? Uh, it is a 15-foot cone. Um... Okay. So if he can miss me and get these two gnolls right here uh yeah dead. he can do exactly that as you watch as sean holds out his hand in a small it looks more like a contraption made of tubes and wood uh but it suddenly climbs up onto his shoulder and you hear sean just say go on then get him little buddy and then <laughs> this wave of fire passes over both of them um i need to read this thing see how much damage it does because I don't remember here it is so it's his bonus action to create it and then 2d8 fire damage okay and they have to make a deck save oh yay yay that's one they rolled a seven and the second one rolled a four Okay, so they both take full damage from 2d8 fire. Hell yeah. As the flames wash over both of them, uh, they each take 10 points of fire damage. Dude, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, they both look scorched and in pain as the flamethrower just kind of sparks. Just... <laughs> out of the end of it after the flame washes out and Sean is beaming down in his creation and says that was fantastic excellent job little guy and then he puts it back up on his shoulder that he <laughs> still has an action that's just his bonus action to oh uh gosh okay uh <laughs> see if he can he's an artificer see if he can feed me one of the one of the potions yeah he'll, uh he, yeah he'll, you ask him you look you're looking like shit uh, and he uh, he looks at you and he says, "I look Push. over at him haggardly uh, and give him a thumbs up, like <laughs> maybe, yeah." And he will feed you a potion as an action, so you heal for ten. Awesome. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> that, that will be a for lot the better. flavor of this. As he's like putting the turret on his shoulder, he poof, pops the top off of a file and just puts it in your mouth. Drink that. He'll be fine. All right, <laughs> take it all. He doesn't let go of the file, and you now have a glass file in your mouth. All right. 
Uh, that's Sean's turn. It's now this Null's turn. Uh, this Null has a commanding view over all of you, and it's going to take some longbow attacks. See how it do. This one's shooting for Sean, and that's a 19 to hit. That certainly hits. Sean takes six points of piercing damage. Right to the temp HP. The second attack. Misses. Okay. Uh, this knoll kind of jitters and jeers and uh, just keeps drawing arrows. It seems content to stay right where it is. Uh, it's now Duracon's okay. turn. All right. Uh, if he can step up right next to me and just fucking smack this knoll right in front of me. Oh, yeah, great. for sure. Uh, he raises his battle axe and then swings it. Let's see. That is a 17 to hit, which certainly hits a knoll right in the face. Uh, he's wearing a shield, so it's one-handed. Uh, here, old man, it's 11 points of slashing damage. The battle axe bites deep. And then almost barely standing. Uh, All right. Let's see. I don't think Duracon has a bonus action unless he wants to spend a channel divinity, which I don't think he wants to. No. One moment. Nah. He just he's content with the battle axe biting deep, and trusts that Lilith will finish the job. As Lilith is up next, she makes a rapier attack on the one in front of her again. What happened to the battle music? It's still, it says it's playing, but it is not. <laughs> there we go. Sorry about that. All good. Uh, Lilith misses with a 10 on her first swing, uh, but follows it up with the short sword. Let's see if that hits. Yeah, that's a 21 to hit. She deals... This one is at the one in front of you, uh, as has been her attack pattern. And this one dies from a stab to the side of the head. All right. Uh, Lilith will... Well, it takes an action or a bonus action to remove the totem. She used her bonus action to swing. It's now your turn. Okay. Um... I will take the totem as a bonus action. Roll me a d4. Uh, it is not the real oh. totem. Shifted everything up again. Wonderful. Uh, <laughs> okay, so it's not the real totem. Okay, he'll take out his uh, bow, hop over here, now that he's not in melee with anybody, and yeah. take a shot at this knoll up here. Okay. Make your bow attack. It has the high ground, which doesn't actually matter. Uh, 13. A 13 misses its AC. Yeah. Okay. NT. All right, then. Uh, that's that's his turn. Okay. Uh, next. This null one right in front of Lilith. It is slavering and raging, and it will... Uh, swing recklessly, gaining an additional attack, and its attacks are at advantage now that it is critically injured. Uh, but it rolled an 18 to hit, which does not hit Lilith's AC of 19, thanks to her fancy okay. armor. Uh, and rolled an 18 again, which does not hit still. All right, now for the bite. It's at advantage, too. Just can't hit her. Okay. Uh, that's a 20 to hit, which does hit. Damn. Let's roll damage with the bite. It is slavering, and you see this thick ichor dripping out of its teeth. Uh, at this point, I need Lilith to make a con save. To save against poison. She rolls a natural two. So Lilith takes three points of piercing damage and six points of poison damage. So 
9 to damage total, defeating her temporary HP, but she's still up and looking fine. It's now Matthew's turn. Matthew is going to run up behind this guy and stab it with advantage. Actually, had advantage because of the reckless anyway, but deal hits with a 20. Ah, uh, he kills it. <clears throat> and we'll bonus action <laughs> pluck the totem. Go ahead and win it point. Let's see. If this is the real totem. It is the real totem. As Matthew plucks it from around its neck, <laughs> the gnolls are teleported away in a mist of purple smoke. And as that happens, the encounter ends. All right. Uh, Matthew's holding it up and says, I got it. Ah. All right. Good. Uh, Kalen will take a little bit of a breather. Um, and uh, Sean looks at you and says, you all right. You got real fucked up at the start there. Uh, and we'll take out a salve and I'll use a spell for this. Um, go ahead and use uh, Cure Wounds. Okay. Not bad. Hey, look at that. Heal for eight. Uh, now, not minus eight. As far as combats go, that combat was relatively quiet. Uh, the only thing that made any real noise was the flamethrower, and that wasn't that loud. It was just kind of a whoosh. Um, you now see that for the next hour, Sean has the flamethrower ability available to him as a bonus action. And it's just kind okay. of sitting on his shoulder. Um, you see, when you look at it, it's a wooden construct with metal pipes running around it. Um, you see that the metal pipes kind of fashion down into legs, and the spout makes it look almost like a mouth of a mouse. Uh, does he t make us aware that it'll only last for an hour? You mechanically know this now that I've told it to you. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> All right. Um, you got bit, Lilith. So let's um, each take a potion and make use of this... Um, of Sean's turret. All right. Uh, she, Lilith is fine. She is down three hit points. All right. Uh, I am down five. So I guess, yes, we'll just continue and be, uh, let's be a little bit more stealthy. We're doing our best. And as we All right. head back to the map, that was your first encounter. You have two fake totems and one real totem. Make a note. Okay. Two fake, one real. All right. <clears throat> so, as we continue... Hold on a minute. Go ahead and roll me 86. I'm just taking this in my notes. Okay. 86. Okay. Didn't I just roll that one? You did, yes. So we're still in the market. Okay. Uh, roll me a d2. Or a d4, sorry. Four. Your group has the advantage this time. Hell yeah. All right. Let's roll a d20 and see who it is you have the advantage on. Thirteen. A Thirteen. Okay. So, you have some choices. You could choose to use a trap. You could choose to uh, basically hide and wait and just take a surprise round. Or you could do something else that I haven't thought of. Uh, I think... Yeah, we'll, we'll hide and wait. And we'll get a surprise round. Okay. So, because of your practice... Together as a team, your team has a bonus of plus four to stealth. So what you're going to do right. is you're going to roll a stealth. I'm going to roll a stealth for all your NPCs. We're going to average them and then add four. 
<clears throat> and everyone is rolling stealth. Basically, it's it's good that you're rolling stealth with this cloak of elven kind. <laughs> yeah, because Zerikon would otherwise be at disadvantage. I'll add a D4 to it. Okay. Well, Matthew vanishes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so 16 plus 4 is 20. Okay. 20 for... Okay. All right. That's pretty good. Your team rolled pretty well in stealth. Uh, so. Need to reload again. <clears throat> Let me know when you're back in. Okay, I am in. All right. So Here is what the encounter looks like. As these two stealthily garbed contractors, these are not students, two individuals wearing thick black leathers, and they are moving very silently. And the only reason you even see them is because they passed right into your view through the alley. Your team has been set up for an ambush here as you heard something coming from that alley. And as these two contractors make their way up, this is the moment that you should strike, or rather, that it is maybe optimal to strike. So, as you okay. begin your surprise round, I need you to roll initiative just to know an order upon which you do uh, begin your ambush. Sounds good. Uh, combat not started. Initiative. I'll just roll this way. What was your roll? Uh, 17. 17. Okay. Wait. Why is there two? No. Oh. There's two of these. It was weird. Uh, in the combat tracker, I only see myself. I fixed it. It was it was bugged. All right. So Lilith goes first. How does she begin the ambush? Okay. Uh, well, she has a bow. She does. So yeah, we'll stay. We're on a rooftop, maybe. So you're on or like a, a second story balcony looking over the market. You okay. are on a rooftop. Gotcha. All right. Uh, yeah. So definitely started off with a bow. Um, okay. Lilith kind of steps to the side and takes her first attack with a longbow at advantage. Uh, and before the ambush, I'll just point at the front one. Okay. That's the one she's targeting. Uh, uh, she rolls a 25 to hit, which certainly hits. Um, and she deals eight points of piercing damage. Uh, does she action search? Yes. Okay. She will throw everything into this and also make it a trip attack. Awesome. Well, maybe not a trip attack because we're going to... Okay. Well... That's fine. She already declared it. Uh, so... <laughs> uh, let me roll the damage because she hits with another 25. 7 plus a d6. And he must make a strength saving throw. DC is 14. He's not great at that. He rolled a 12. He falls prone. And takes 13 hey. points of damage. That's Lilith's turn. Uh, next. Cancel. Uh, Kalen, you're up. Okay. Uh, 
well then. Um, prone. Damn it. <laughs> you are above him, so you still have advantage because of surprise. Okay, gotcha. Uh, so I will actually use my favorite foe, one of my favorite foe features. Uh, so I can add a d4. Okay. Uh, to this, and I'll take a bow attack at advantage, or is it just straight? It's advantage. Okay. So prone only works because it gives you cover, but he's not in cover because you're above him. Yeah, I'm rolling like shit. 17? 17 hits. Okay. Uh, here is the damage. So this Eight is the one you're plus... targeting? Yeah, the front one. Okay. Eight plus four, 12. 12? Sir. Foundry, you're killing me. Okay, I'll just do it manually. Okay. Well, it won't let me edit his health. Uh, why? I don't know. Uh, if you right click him and sh show his HP at the bottom of his token, you can edit it that way. No, I cannot. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'd love to. Uh... There, I'll just do it one at a time. There we go. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Whatever. Foundry's been bugged lately, and I don't know why. Okay, so that's your turn. Next is Duracon. What does he do on his ambush? Does he leap down? Does he cast a spell? What's he do? Uh, fire breath. Uh, leap down right here. And he has lightning okay. breath. Oh, lightning breath. Okay. Uh, if he can get them both in it, then that would be great. It is a line, so he's gonna have to get to here. Which I think, if All he right. rolls athletics well enough, he totally can. All right. Let's see. I think that's what we'll do. He runs and gets just here. And that's the end All of right. his movement. And then he will breath weapon. Yeah, breath weapon. Let's go. And it is this long. That's cool looking. Uh, that is they, very cool. They need to make a... Uh, dexterity saving throw. Hold on a minute. Or they take... Okay. They are pretty good at dex saves. Is breath weapon a save or suck? No. Uh, however, these individuals have evasion. Oh. <sighs> Uh, it does hurt the one in the back, though, who rolled a natural one. Uh, the okay. one in the back takes three points of lightning damage. Oh, okay. my God. Is the breath weapon his action? Yes. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. That's Duracon's turn. <sighs> okay. It's now Matthew's turn. Sneak attack that front one. Get one of them out immediately. Okay. Uh, he will have to melee for it to be at advantage. So he will dart down. Okay. Thrusts with his short sword. He will bonus action dip. The poison Ooh. as an assassin. Attack advantage. And if he's an assassin, he gets... No, that's assassinate? No? He does not have assassinate. Uh, unfortunately. All right. I think that's level 7 or 6 or something it's, like that. It's... Right? Uh, hold on a minute. Oh, and he hit you, score against the creature. That is surprised is a critical hit. He already has it. Uh, mm -hmm. So he hits. It's a crit. Um, there it is. Uh, he deals 13 points of damage with thrust and then the, the poison... Uh, hold on, that crits. 2d8. Plus sneak, he, this dude is 
unconscious as fuck. All right. He dealt like 30 damage with just the poison. Uh, okay. He's, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so Duracon had a bonus action. Right, but it's not his turn anymore. Okay, I was... I know, I know what you're thinking, That's fair. but unfortunately... That's fair. I just thought right. I might ask. Yeah, it's worth asking. Okay. This guy is no longer in initiative. Remove combat. All right, it's now Sean's turn. All right, Sean. Uh, let's see if he gets the real totem off this guy. Okay, he will hop down, bonus action, pick up the totem. I will roll a d2. It is not the real totem. Okay. Uh, all right. Can he action use his turret on this guy? Or they have evasion. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they have evasion. We already, we He'll already just, learned. He can just shoot them with a firebolt or something. Let's go. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Uh, he raises his hands in the arcane firearm, <laughs> shoots a firebolt at this guy. Uh, let's see if he hits. That's a natural one. Oh. Sean is distracted looking at the totem, and the firebolt just whoosh, hits the cobblestone <laughs> near him. And that is the end of the surprise round. It's now their turn as they rolled a really good initiative. And this guy runs. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Uh, he is going to action dash and bonus action dash. He's booking it. So that's 30, 30, and he gets out of the map. Oh, okay. Well. So, while you have survived this encounter and gotten a false totem, they got away. Damn it. All right. That is the nature of the beast sometimes. Okay. Well, shit. Yep. Uh, that fucker was fast. Holy shit. Lilith turns and looks and says, No shit, did you see him run? Fuck. <laughs> as soon as his friend was down, he was like, Hell no. Okay. I gotta be that quick sometime. Jesus. And she climbs down off the roof. Um, you did not suffer any damage. You didn't really spend any resources. The only one who did was Lilith used a maneuver. A well-handled uh, and. And a, a action surge, uh, which oh, is yes, fine. That's true. So, all right, let's make our way towards class and see if we can catch anything else. Okay, so let me see here. Uh, we have time for one more encounter, if you'd like to okay. hit it. So let's go to the map. Okay, roll me d six. Two. Oh, it shifted up again. <sighs> okay. <laughs> uh, two. Okay. Oops. I didn't mean to activate it. Let me put that back. Uh, okay. So, on your way to glasses, you saw a couple of battles that were going harshly. And so, you turned around and went the other way wisely. Um, and as you did, you ended up in the main street. Uh, whilst in the main street, I need you to roll me a d4. Let's see who has advantage. Okay. Uh, I had to reload because it wouldn't load. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, d4. Yes, sir. Two. Two. Your party has advantage once again. Awesome. All right. Roll me a d20. That's how it is. 12, 20, 1. <laughs> a 1. Okay, this is going to be a very silly encounter. That's okay. Could use some levity. Um, as your party is making your way up the main street, you can choose a number of ways to take advantage. You can just take a surprise round, or you can set a trap. How do you want to handle well, this? Well, let's set a trap. Okay, which kind? A spell slot from Sean or a wire trap from Matthew? Let's go with Matthew's wire traps. Okay. 
Matthew's wire traps cover a 15 foot square. One minute here. Let me roll to see how these are lined up. Okay, hold on, I'm looking at the table. Okay, interesting. I love this encounter. It's very silly. Okay. Uh, do me a oh. favor and roll me stealth. All right. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay, hold on. This flat. Duracon rolled a fourteen. Okay. Matthew. Rolled a natural one. Lilith rolled pretty good. Okay. And Sean rolled pretty good as well. Okay, so even though there's a natural one in the group, your average is still really high. Average stealth of 22. With a plus four. So, as you all have hunkered down near uh, some trees and brush, and Matthew has just finished placing a wire trap at the meat of an alley to the road that you're on. And as he nestles back in the brush, hiding, the noise renders itself clear, and I need to roll. But first, I'll show you what it is that you see. Okay. So go ahead and zoom in here. Um, you see that there are four creatures that are pouring out of this alley, and they are strange. Go ahead and roll me a nature check, or an arcana check. Either is fine. Oh, I know what these are, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, nature check? Yeah. Oh, a 12. Oh. You're not sure what they are. They seem to be sentient plants. They're very strange. Uh... However, as they've emerged from this alley, this is where the trap was set. And I need to roll to see if they see the trap. Their DC is based on Matthew's, uh, basically, his sleight of hand. Okay. Let me see. These things are not super perceptive. One fails. Two fails. Three fails. They all fail. None of them have any idea they're stepping into a trap. Which means they all, all right. have disadvantage on a dexterity saving throw. As suddenly you see this veggie pygmy that's riding a weird plant-like dog steps forward. And then you hear this horrible... <laughs> as wire just spins out from the spring trap and slashes through all of them. Do me a favor and roll me 66. Freshly chopped salad. Okay. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> D6? 66. Oh. Okay. Well. Just disregard that. 66. Here you go. 19 points of slashing damage. Uh, okay. Most of them don't have that many hit points. Uh, and that's one of them succeeded. One failed. The one atop the dog failed. And the last one failed. Okay. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, this got brief. This guy takes half because he succeeded. So he takes ten. He's barely alive. This one is instantly slashed. Nope. I told it to change targets and did not. This one is killed. This one is killed. This one takes 19 and is still up, but barely. And that is where we roll initiative. <laughs> so Sweet. let me... Uh... Yep, combat tracker's ready. Go ahead and roll initiative for me. Uh... 
Ah. Uh, Eleven. Oh, okay. K1, K1, K1. Oh well. This is going to be a quick encounter. <laughs> uh, Lilith rolls. So, Matthew. And Sean. These strange creatures, as the, the wires slash through them, and two are immediately shredded to pieces. The one riding a dog, and it seems surprised, looking in all directions, does not see you as Matthew just rises out of, out of the brush and says, That's rough, friend, and shoots an arrow at it. <laughs> uh, as he attacks with advantage, because they did not know he was there. And he goes before them, so it's a crit. If it hits. Uh, that was a 13 to hit. It has an AC of 13. It is killed immediately because it had two. Okay. <laughs> just the arrow just slaps into the back of the Veggie Pygmy's head and it just <laughs> is on the ground. Uh, Amazing. Matthew looks over. This hardly seems fair. And then he drops back into the brush and is going to move and re stealth as a bonus action. Awesome. See how he does. He rolled a natural 18. He, you don't see him, and he's right in front of you. Uh, okay. Oh, I didn't hit me. I'm a fool. It's now Duracon's turn. And Dur you hear Duracon say, about time. And he will surge forward. <laughs> and he will battle axe the one riding the dog, which the dog is dead. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, he rolls a 19 to hit. He swings the battle axe down hard. And he deals maximum damage, 11 points of slashing damage to this Veggie Pygmy. It is immediately slain. Okay. Well then. And that's the end All of right. the combat. <laughs> We're going to use those uh, traps a little more often. Matthew Holy shit. is like t behind you, and he just twirls a dagger and says, I told you they were nice. Um, I guess uh, let's pick up everybody's totem. Yeah, you find it. And you have three fake totems and one real totem. Make a note of it. Okay. Three fake, one real. As soon as you pick up the real one, the bodies of the Veggie Pygmies <laughs> vanish. Oh, five. And two. Again, that was a fairly quiet encounter. There's no chance of anybody hearing you. Whew. All right. Uh, aside from that first one, I think we're doing good. Um... Let's take a little bit of a short rest. Let's so, go to gal Glass. Sounds like a plan. And you begin making your way to Glass's Griffin's Bag. And as you head that way, that is where we will stop your first session of the Fall Festival. Okay. So make a note that you're going to Glass's in the beginning of next session. You will take a short rest. All right. <laughs> uh... What? First short rest at glass. First sh short rest at glass. Got it. Okay. All right. What do you think of the fall festival? Ooh. Uh, I mean, I thought it was going to be over first fucking <laughs> encounter. Because, uh, man, I had eight, eight HP left. That was uh, rough. So even if you get knocked down, unless your totem is taken, you're not out. Right. Yeah. But still, it's just, it was scary. Uh, it was a rough start. So, yeah. So I was like, okay, well, I got to be more careful here. Um, and, uh, but the the rest of them, aside from the guy getting away, yep. damn it. Um, <laughs> and you shredded some salad. And shredded some salad. I think uh, I think that went well. Went Good. well. Um, Good. So I look looking forward to, seeing, to the rest of it. Yeah, I look forward to seeing how your encounters go. Uh, to everyone watching, we love you, and we can't wait to see you next week. Thank you for playing. I'll see you next time.